ja, vanuit echt adoptie, adoptieperspectief uh, non events geweest zijn. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, welcome to Code of X. I'm Nikolai, I'm here with Sander Mac at J4. Hi. And uh, Sander, introduce yourself. Sure. We start with Hi. Topic. Uh, so my name is Sander, I uh, work with uh, Luminous, which is a software technology company here in the Netherlands. Um, I'm also an author for O'Reilly and, uh, and Pluralsight, so um, uh, I've written, much like you, uh, a book about the module yeah. system. So <laughs> we have some common ground there. And yeah. uh, yeah, we're also in competition, so we're not having any links, you know, <laughs> seriously. There will, yeah, there will be a link to both of the books down there, and you can buy any what you want. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so yes, you also know a little bit about the mo module system, and but it didn't start there, right? You were into modularity long time before that. Exactly, yeah. So uh, at Luminous, we also used OGI a lot, mm -hmm. which is the alternative module system for Java, which was built next to Java. Yeah. Uh, now we have a module system in Java itself, so yeah. that's, that's quite a difference. Uh, but still, we do have lots of, co lots of code bases that yeah. still leverage uh, OGI as well. Yeah. So um, maybe that's that's a good place to start. If mm -hmm. you would start these projects over with the modularity landscape as it is now, with the model yeah. system at your hands, um, even as young as it is and as not so much supported by the community mm -hmm. as it is, um, are there many projects where you would decide now, uh, because OGI can do more things than, than sure. JMS or JPMS, uh, are there, how many projects would you say they don't use that much of OSGI. I would go mm -hmm. with JPMS, or what's the trade-off as you see it there? I would say the majority of the applications is sort of like more enterprise-like, where mm -hmm. uh, much in a spring-like fashion, you wire everything together at the start of the application, and uh, nothing too dynamic happens yeah. after that. And uh, of course, OGI is very dynamic in this yeah. uh, module system. Uh, you don't have to use those dynamics, but they're there. And uh, we only use these in a smaller amount of uh, applications, uh, mainly around more uh, IoT device uh, scenarios. So that's the main differentiating point for you, the OSGI versus the, the Java module system, the main difference is the, I mean, there, there are other differences, but is that what comes mostly down to you for most projects? The I dynamic think behavior of containers coming and going? If and I would frame it, in the, yeah, if I would frame it in, in terms of uh, the biggest design difference between yeah. the two, then that would be it, yeah. And that would also yeah. be the feature set that you say is most valuable outside of the module system that you still rely on in some cases? We do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But in the other ones, do you feel like, um, so the other ones you say the module system would be f just f just as fine. Mm -hmm. Would you then prefer it for some reason, or do you say, well, oh, if I even if I don't use the yeah. dynamic features of OSGI, yeah. it doesn't really matter which one I use? Well, I prefer it in the sense that uh, it's now native in the platform, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. always a win, uh, especially if you look at terms of uh, tooling and adoption. There, um, OSGI has always sort of been uh, lagging behind. And yeah. I mean, lots of people did great work there, but it was just a small crew of people who had to yeah. do everything for Eclipse and Maven tooling, etc. Uh, which is getting better every day, but uh, you don't have the whole community, so to say, behind yeah. you. So whereas with the module system now, it was already implemented by Eclipse and JetBrains and all the yeah. usual suspects uh, <laughs> very, very quickly. So I think that's, that's one of the main advantages I see with the module system as well. So I have no actual experience with OSGI, so you know, mm -hmm. take whatever I say with a grain of salt. Uh, but yes, my impression was also from the outside that mm, the tool support was like not always as good as people wanted it. And also I think that there's, mm, there's few features building on top of that. So for example, now I expect way more mainstream tools to just give you more insight into how modules work or how, yeah. how, how the modularity of the system works. Yeah. So I guess not because the module system does that better or, pr or prepares that better than the OSGI, mm -hmm. uh, than OSGI does. I think just by the amount of the adoption, just by the number of people using it actively or even passively by uh, running on the modular, um, sure. mod yeah. modular runtime. So I think, I hope at least, that we'll see um, more push towards that. Like even now, for example, when you look at Java 8 with lambdas and streams, even now uh, IDEs are including new features, so that's like ages sure. old. So yeah. that yeah. Uh, there I think there's a lot, well, ages, like <laughs> <four years>. <laughs> <laughs> almost five. Ages in terms of IT, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think lots of things uh, are still coming, I hope, yeah. in that area. There's one caveat though, if you compare OSGI and, and the current mm. in incarnation of the module system, um, OSGI really has a strong model around services and the mm. uh, module system in Java also has, has the notion of services, right? Uh, but it's a bit low level, you know, the service loader API and then uh, people tend to prefer uh, program models like Spring, uh, dependency injection, things like that. And there's not a great story yet, in my opinion, mm. uh, bridging these two worlds. Whereas yeah. in OSGI, they're very tightly intertwined. They have the services model, which is also defined by OSGI, and there's the modularity layer, which is also defined by OSGI. Okay. 
And um, in that sense, uh, they do still have uh, somewhat of an edge. Uh, okay. Yeah. Can you give a concrete example of that? As I said, I'm OCI noob. So what, what? I mean, I know how the Java module system services work. And as you said, you mm -hmm. basically, right, at some point, you just go to the service loader and do this load thing. Yeah. And then you get a bunch of classes back. And then you, if you want to filter based on something, you all have to do that yeah. manually. So OCI has a similar service registry, um, which you can fill programmatically if you want to. Uh, but there is also a yeah. very nice uh, annotation-based API, which, mm -hmm. uh, which does the work for you. So you sort of get close to the dependent injection scenario where you just add an annotation to a class and it will be published as a, um, a service yeah. for its interface and you uh, get to inject it in some field in another class and that may, may be in a different module and then uh, OCI will wi wire this together based on the, on these annotations uh, which is very close to how people think about dependency injection yes. in spring and in juice and, and, and situations like that. But well, that feels like uh, dependency injection frameworks could start using the relying on the. I mean, you can yeah. you can have that injected based on the annotations and stuff. What you cannot, well, even then you have to update the module descriptor though, right? So you have to have some kind of IDE support. Yeah. So just the annotation would never be enough. Mm -hmm. The IDE would then most likely the IDE because it already starts doing this kind yeah. of things. But then they say, hey, I saw you. You've it's, it's definitely yeah. possible to layer this on top, I believe, yeah. on, the, on the service loader mechanism yeah. in Java. Um, it's just interesting that that hasn't really happened yet, and uh, not, not in any sense of uh, uh, real adap adaptation. Yeah, I think uh, everybody, not, well, not everybody, but many uh, um, uh, libraries and frameworks, they now work on Java 9 or 11, mm -hmm. and but like actually starting to use the module system that's still lagging behind. I think that yeah. that's kind of natural because it doesn't make a lot of sense to start really aggressively adopting module system features until you baseline against the version that has it. Yeah. So, so that's, that's, that's exactly also the message of my talk at this con conference here. So I, I sort of did a retrospective looking back on the last year after yes. Java 9. Uh, so what has happened in terms of uh, the module system? And what you see there is that the adoption rates of Java 9 and Java 10, even notwithstanding the module system, yeah. uh, are very low. Yes. So naturally, and the adoption of the modules and module system itself is also low. And with Java 11, uh, I think we all believe that there's a turning point in, yes. the, in the community. Uh, so people will start migrating from 8 to 11. Yep. And this also means that people, for the first time, will be exposed to this, to this feature. So uh, in that sense, I think uh, the best is yet to come. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. So I asked people at, at the talk, like, who's using you know, what Java, can Java versions? And I found that basically everybody's using, using 8. It's not even like a normal distribution, it's just like yeah. it's everybody's on 8. Mm -hmm. And then you got like a handful of percent below, but you also already have a handful of percent above. So yeah. I, I feel like these yeah. are already on even on an equal footing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I really hope that uh, this will work in the future um, to have more people uh, going to 11. Yeah. So I was asking you, oh yeah, right, one thing. So I talked about, you just mentioned your talk. Mm -hmm. uh, couple, you had a couple of, of uh, messages or uh, something that you told people like, you should look into this. Um, like repeat a couple of the most important ones here. Yeah, so uh, one of the first ones is, uh, okay, uh, we get it. People didn't really use Java 9 and 10, but 11 is here to stay, right? Uh, yes. Long-term support. So this is the time to, to get looking at the features and then to immerse yourself in this new world. So that's the first message. Um, the other one was more geared towards uh, library maintainers. So what we see, um, uh, I together with some people did some uh, scanning on Maven Central, and we yep. see that. Like also, I'm gonna link, leave a link in the description yeah. box. That's really a really interesting thing that you're yeah. doing there. Yeah. So uh, what we did there is we looked at all the libraries that's been uh, pushed in uh, in August. So just monitoring small periods, and then we saw that. Uh, about 1% of these libraries, uh, only 1% had a module descriptor, and about 9% of the libraries had this automatic module name header, which is sort of a placeholder to indicate, okay, I'm usable as an automatic module under this name, uh, which is good, but it's, it's too low. So um, yes. now's also the time to, to start speaking to library maintainers, authors, and vocalize uh, uh, the requests around, uh, okay, please have a look at this. And it's not that hard to enable a library as an automatic module. Yes. And even taking the next step, if your library doesn't have dependencies, for example, is sort of trivial. So, yeah, I, I think that when uh, I think this is actually something that can maybe not be pushed but more be pulled. So, if people starting new projects now, I think new yeah. projects will naturally start on 11. And for a new project, uh, I would also say, I would also argue, uh, it's natural to start with the module system because. Yeah. While it can be a lot of work to to migrate a legacy application, well, first of all, it migrated across the nine bump to eleven, mm -hmm. but then also to modularize an application that consists of of dozens or hundreds of Maven modules, yeah. or Gradle, whatever, like a kind of couple, two or three digit jars, number of jars. That can be um, a lot of work, and it might feel like it's not really worth it. I would argue it might be, or uh, very very well might be, because usually. When you come into a position when you realize, oh wow, this is hard, this is usually an indicator of that you, that specific part of your program is not well modularized and yeah. you're going to benefit from doing that. So I think much of the pain, it's what also what OSGI usually says, people think 
um, OCI is complex. Mm -hmm. No, it's modularity. It's True. Or not, maybe not complex is the right word, but it's that's that's not trivial. Yeah. And OCI is not adding that much uh, complexity at all. Uh, and I think that I'm not talking about how much uh, complexity OCI adds. I can't t speak to that. But yes, I would say um, properly modularizing the application is a lot of work, particularly if you start it later. Mm -hmm. So I think for new projects, it will be natural um, to start with the module system. And because like even if you realize after half a year, it's like too many of my dependencies don't do this well and it's too much of a fight, mm -hmm. it's just the removal of one file. So even if push comes to shove, you can back out easily. Sure, and you still have a modularized application if, if yeah. you don't have module scripts, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I th yeah, and I think as more, if more people try that, then they maybe actually pull a pull from these uh, from these applications into the into the libraries and frameworks. And mm -hmm. I, look, we use this now. Can you please like yeah. follow, follow suit and just give yeah. us the minimum amount? And the automatic module name is definitely the minimum library developers should do. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Once they verify that it works, don't just don't just throw <laughs> it no, in there. No. 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 <laughs> do the do the exactly. hard work first. Yeah. Uh, yeah anything else you want to add? So yeah, I'm s also very, very interested in how the module system will evolve, if at all. So oh, yeah, um, true. some thoughts on that are uh, interesting. Uh, of course, there's the versioning, right? <laughs> the big can of worms. <laughs> uh, but still, I mean, uh, we get to express a version of a module at this yeah. moment. That's possible. Um, why not use this for at least checking versions, et cetera? That will be a, a worthwhile addition, in my opinion, um, though I do know how contentious this topic is. Yeah, so yeah. what you're arguing is, so just, just to recap, uh, the module system does. The module system doesn't really care about versions. You can embed that information, but it doesn't really process it in any yeah. meaningful way. And uh, so the, the the thing that we once hoped was we have two different versions of the same module running, and that's really very unlikely to happen. Well, yeah, I would even argue that that's a bad practice, and that's not what I'm advocating yes. for. But I do want True. to detect if I have some conflicts and some I need to resolve. Uh, stuff there. Right. So, that yeah. so what exactly yeah. were you getting at? So, what you would think? So, we should first of all, I think build tools should just start and uh, embedding the the module. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the, yeah, the version that you put into the build tool. They should start embedding that into the modular jar once yeah. you build it. I think they don't do it yet. I'm not sure you. Maven doesn't uh, at least. Um, yeah. I think that's one thing that you should do, that they should do. Um, and then, what exactly were you hoping for? So then, the, then the module system launches, mm -hmm. and then what? It detects like you have two, you have dependencies, your dependencies. You d express dependencies on two different versions, or you have two different versions on the module path, or what exactly well, are you Well, the hardest issue is, of course, when transitively you get two dependencies yeah. in different versions, right? And I would really like the module system to also be mindful of this. And it sort of does. Uh, if you have everything on the single uh, directory module yeah. path, then it will complain, but there are situations where it doesn't. Um, also, um, when expressing uh, requires dependencies in modules, uh, it might be sensible to think about uh, shouldn't a version be part of this as well in yeah. some way. And I I'm not saying there are perfect solutions there, but uh, at least it could do more than just today. I thought about that as well, but one thing I wonder is because usually the thing with the versions is that you want to actually express a range. Yeah. But at the time you're writing, you don't know what the range will be, right? You're depending on Guava 21, you don't know whether it's going to be 25 or 28 that drops the feature that you're using, right? So It brings you back to the whole semantic version yeah. discussion and if people really get this and apply this. So I know it's a yeah, kind but of I worms. think semantic yeah. versioning yeah. is really not... Well, people like Google literally does semantic versioning, but not in a way that is very meaningful. They just update the major version every time, so that really doesn't help you a whole lot. True. Um, True. Yeah. Um, with that, yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm skeptical about versions as well. But one thing you said that you don't adv uh, advocate for having two different versions of the same thing running, mm -hmm. and so I'm torn on that. I come down on the same side, but I've, you know, like in a big project, you know how it is, right? Every time you update dependencies, sure. you yeah. have to like to put into work to make sure that all the all the things align. That's what Spring Boot does, basically, by mm -hmm. saying like, look, this, we decided these versions for you. This is the baseline. <laughs> yeah. Just pick yeah. these. Yeah. Uh, never, never mind which log4j version you want to have. Just use ours, mm -hmm. the one we specify. And I think yeah. that came from came from from a lot of experience. And so in big projects, when you update something, it's always like another like a can of worms. You're pulling yeah. some thread. You're like, let's see whether this even works. We can only try find out by trying it. Yeah. And so it sounds like that would be just so nice to run just two different versions of Guava and be fine with it. Mm -hmm. But then imagine, I mean, we're already in a position where we have like tons of jars, like we have like an application and then a pyramid of dependencies below that. Yeah. Imagine how horrible that would be if you would start multiplying that some parts of those by two, by three, by five, mm -hmm. and you end up like with, like that would, that would really like yeah. that would increase deployment size. That would, I think, I would likely say would still increase it will still make some kind kinds of, of errors more likely, or at least harder to find. So unifying all this, making this tree flat into a single path, and then say, look, now we have to just have everything just once. Yeah. 
I know it's there's painful, a, but I think it's a necessary continuous work. I know there's a tension between theory and practice here. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but I also have worked on OSGI systems where we can have multiple versions of, of the same library. And in the end, it always comes back to bite you. So that's at yeah. least my experience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Even though it can be made to work, uh, there will be some case where it doesn't. And yeah, and yeah then you're still in pain. Yeah, particularly with, um, uh, with the fact that if you do that by class lower isolation, mm -hmm. then you end up with a situation where things that should be equal won't be equal. Exactly. And I would guess that this yeah. is the most likely thing. Like somebody gives you something which is supposed to be, I don't know, like an... Uh, I the problem is some <laughs> some sort of guava collection, and you have a different version yeah. of collection, and it won't be the same. Guava collection works fine, but what you like, yeah. I usually try the first example. I always come with this list, but actually, list would work because mm. you are supposed to test well against the list interface, the equals. So if you have two different implementations of list, they can yeah, be yeah, equal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that actually works. But you're right. Actually, the guava mutable list, for example, mm -hmm. um, or sorry, uh, or this this by maps that they have. Yeah. Like you have guava twice. You get one by map here, one by map here. Just start from equal, and things fall apart. Um, and yeah, I, I would I would assume that might be surprising, and mm -hmm. that oh, version conflict is most likely not the first thing that comes to mind, at least unless you're very experienced. Oh. Right. So, like, if you have two, like, you see something breaks, and oh, you observe, yeah, yeah, yeah. you see, like, okay, these things aren't equal. Why aren't these yeah, equal? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that that can be very surprising yeah. and uh, hard to debug. Yeah. 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 So thank you very much, Sander, uh, for you're being here for the interview. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, time. and yeah, now we go out and have more fun at, at the conference. Sure, let's see do you. that. Bye bye. bye.